Now, for more on today's talks, we are joined by Flint Leverett. He is the director of the Iran Project at the New America Foundation and professor of international relations at Penn State, and he joins us from Washington. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Iran pledged today to cooperate with the UN and to let inspectors into its newly revealed uranium enrichment facilities. So, what do you make of these developments? Well, Iranian officials had said before the Geneva meeting that they would grant the IAEA access to this second enrichment site. So there's nothing really surprising there. It seems as if the United States and others in the P5 plus one are, are using this, though, as a positive outcome from today's discussions and using it to justify uh, a second round of meetings later this month. And as you point out, the, the parties also agreed to that second round of talks. Um, what do you think will come out of round two? I think round two will hinge on a couple of points. On the Iranian side, I think the Iranians will continue to insist that they are not going to accept uh, new limits on further development of their nuclear infrastructure. And I think they'll continue to insist that any discussion of nuclear issues needs to be embedded in a much broader strategic conversation. The United States, I anticipate, will uh, really start to press hard for the Iranians to accept some kind of limits on the further development of their nuclear infrastructure while talks are ongoing. Um, as stated, those two positions are irreconcilable. Someone's going to have to give on some aspect of that if this dialogue is going to continue uh, for very long beyond this second meeting. Well, say they don't give in and the talks fail. Uh, there has been mentioned by the uh, U.S. government and by those that are supporting the U.S. of more sanctions for Iran. Do you think that's a good strategy? It's not a good strategy if you actually want to accomplish anything. Um, in the end, neither Russia nor China is going to agree to uh, new sanctions against Iran that would uh, come anywhere near uh, Secretary Clinton's favorite uh, standard of crippling sanctions on Iran. Uh, Russia and China may accept marginal expansions of sanctions, but not anything that would be crippling. Um, and even, you know, if you think what might be possible, uh, you know, the international community is not going to impose so much suffering and hardship on Iran beyond what Iran endured, say, during the Iran-Iraq war, that sanctions would generate strategic leverage over their decision making. Um, it's not an effective strategy. What would you suggest as an alternative? I think the alternative is serious, strategically grounded diplomacy with Iran aimed at resolving differences between the United States and Iran. And as part of that process, Iran needs to know, understand, feel confident that its own strategic needs are being addressed and can be met. That's what got us the breakthrough with China. That's what got us the breakthrough with Libya. If we want success here, that's the approach that needs to be pursued. Flint Leverett, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.